Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles and welcome to another macro struggle. Today we are going to introduce something called Bill's Coconut Island. Bill's Coconut Island is a tool that we are going to use when we talk about macroeconomic models and you'll see why we are going to do that in this video. So we are going to talk about not only the motivation for why we are doing Bill's Coconut Island, we'll talk about the ISLM model as an example of when Bill's Coconut Island can be useful, and then we are going to talk about the setup of the island. The ISLM model example is also useful because that is the first model that we are going to build over the next series of videos using Bill's Coconut Island. So let's go ahead and get started. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around. But first, I want to talk a little more in depth about the motivation for why we're using this thing called Bill's Coconut Island. The reason is that macroeconomic models, both the ISLM model and other models, can be quite difficult. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of different markets that are interacting with each other, and that can make it difficult to think about the intuition and what's going on inside the model. It's also the case that a lot of these models have a lot of math, and that math can be kind of tricky. So overall, what we want to do is we want to come up with the simplest model that we can think of and use that very simple model to help guide us through more complicated models, both in terms of thinking about the intuition, but also in terms of guiding our math and checking ourselves to see if that math makes sense. So let's start with the ISLM model. Now, this ISLM graph is really the culmination of three markets being in equilibrium all at the same time, where the fixed employment line comes from the labor market, the LM curve is coming from the asset market, and the IS curve is coming from the goods market. The ISLM model is really three different markets talking and interacting with each other. So the labor market is talking and interacting with the goods market, and the asset market and the goods market are interacting. And then later, prices jump into this model, money jumps into this model, and now you've got a whole bunch of stuff happening, and it can be tough to really think about the intuition behind what's happening in the ISLM model when something like the wage changes or the interest rate changes or there's a shock in government spending. So we are going to use Bill's Coconut Island to really think about how this model is affected. We want to take this ISLM model and make it as simple as possible so that we're only thinking about the bare bones model. So let's simplify. So let's take out money. Let's only have one good in this economy. So we're not dealing with thousands and thousands of different products. Let's just have a coconut, hence Bill's Coconut Island. Let's have two types of people. There will still be millions and millions of people on this island, but there are really only two types. And if you are a type of person, you behave exactly the same as every other person who is your type. So there's also going to be no government in this model. There are no stores in this model and there are no prices in this model. So again, we're really trying to simplify this as much as possible. So here's the basic diagram for our model. So let's introduce our main character of the story. This is Bill. Bill is a household. Bill lives in this nice house and Bill works for this firm. Now this firm is charged with producing coconuts. How does it produce coconuts? Well, it picks coconuts off the coconut tree. So the firm, all it does is picks coconuts. Now, when Bill works for the firm, he supplies his labor, but Bill also owns these coconut trees. So these coconut trees are owned by Bill. Now, why is that useful? That is a simplifying assumption because we are trying again to make this model as simple as possible. So we want the households to own everything. So Bill owns the coconut trees. He also owns his own labor. So we will add another arrow here that says rent trees. Okay, well, the firm is going to pay him to do that. So what does the firm pay? The firm is going to pay a wage and the firm is going to pay a rental rate to Bill in order to harvest his coconut trees. Now, this wage and rental rate are going to be paid in coconuts because there's no money on this economy. There's nothing else other than coconuts. So Bill is getting paid in coconuts. Now, this other person over here, this other household, this is Meg. Maybe Meg has some long hair that I can draw pretty badly. Now, Meg owns the firm. So she owns these firms. So at the end of the day, if the firm makes any profits, then the profits go right back to Meg. So there's millions of firms. There's millions of bills. 
but every Bill thinks and behaves exactly the same way. And Bill knows everything about Meg and Meg knows everything about Bill. There are also millions and millions of Megs because there are millions and millions of firms. So this is the setup for Bill's Coconut Island. And what we are going to do is we are going to break down these three markets into three videos. So we are going to do a video on the labor market. We are going to do a video on the asset market. And then we're going to do a video on the goods market in Bill's Coconut Island. Then we'll go ahead and combine those videos back together into one big ISLM model where we'll talk about how these markets interact with each other. So that's it for the introduction to Bill's Coconut Island. If these videos are helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of eConstructs.